What is sculpture? Whereas graphic arts like drawing and painting are two-dimensional, sculpture is three-dimensional. An artist who works in sculpture is called a sculptor. Traditionally, sculptors use different processes including carving, modeling, and casting. Though contemporary sculptors sometimes use construction, also known as assemblage, methods to make their works. Different materials are used depending on which technique the artist employs. Stone, such as marble, as well as wood, are often used for carving. Michelangelo's famous David sculpture was carved from Carrara marble. A beautiful grey-white stone from Tuscany. Modeling requires softer, more malleable materials such as clay. In the 1970s, over 7. 000 terracotta soldiers were discovered in the tomb of the ancient Chinese Emperor Qin. Terracotta, which means baked earth, is commonly used for modeling sculpture, especially in the ancient world. One of the more complex types of sculpting is casting. A labor-intensive process that relies on metals such as bronze and other metal alloys. In a technique known as lost wax bronze casting, molten bronze is poured into a wax mold. Which forms a negative image of the final sculpture. Once the bronze is cool, the wax mold is heated and removed, revealing a bronze form. Different versions of this process can produce both solid and hollow sculptures. Casting also allows for multiple copies of a work. For example, Auguste Rodin's 19th century masterpiece, The Thinker, has been recast many times. Sculpture can range from tiny to monumental in size, and can be both representational and abstract. Sculpture made from a wide range of materials can be found all over the world. Who was Suzuki Harunobu? Suzuki Harunobu, 1724-1770 was an innovative Edo printmaker who was the first to produce multicolored prints. He became famous for his Nishiki, brocade, prints of beautiful courtesans. Including geisha as a Daruma crossing the sea, mid-18th century, which depicts an elegant woman wrapped in a red cloak. Staring into the wind as nearby reeds seem to rustle behind her. The print is an example of Haranobu's mastery of color, and of the popularity of not only courtesan scenes, but also of theater in ukiyo-e painting, as the woman takes on the persona of the mythological Daruma. During the Edo period, stylized kabuki theater was extremely popular. And pictures like this often depicted popular actors and characters from the stage. Suzuki Harunobu was one of the most commercially successful artists working in Edo, Tokyo, and his multicolored prints helped to popularize the ukiyo-e style. What makes the Mona Lisa such a great work of art?
her face is everywhere, from backpacks to refrigerator magnets. She occasionally sports a mustache and glasses, and her head has even been replaced by Bart Simpson's. But make no mistake, thousands of people a year crowd around the real thing hanging in the Louvre in Paris. Why is time smoking a picture? The work of William Hogarth, 1697-1764, is a good example of Rococo's more satirical side. The English Hogarth, a painter and engraver, ran in literary circles that included his friend Henry Fielding. His work frequently contains clear moral messages and biting social commentary. For example, his series of paintings, titled Marriage Alone Mode, 1743-1745, satirizes arranged marriages and cautions against vanity, betrayal, and vices such as drinking and gambling. Hogarth's etching, Time Smoking a Picture, also communicates a very specific message from the artist. At the center is an aging personification of time, complete with wings and a scythe, time's attributes. He sits glumly in front of a large framed canvas, shoulders hunched. Blowing smoke directly onto the painting with a long, thin pipe. The nude time sits upon a piece of broken sculpture and his large scythe has fallen forward, slicing a hole in the painting. Next to him is a large jar of varnish. An inscription in Greek is written across the painting's frame. It reads, Time is not a clever craftsman, for he makes everything more obscure. In printed text just below the figure of time, Another message reads, as statues molder into worth. And finally, a caption at the very bottom of the print says, To nature and yourself appeal slash nor learn of others what to feel. Hogarth is commenting on a common 18th century practice of using varnish and smoke to make contemporary works of art look older, and therefore more expensive. As older works of art were deemed more valuable than new ones. Time smoking a picture powerfully communicates Hogarth's criticism of the fact that art dealers were willing to destroy works of art to make a profit. What is the Villa Rotunda? The Villa Rotunda was a residence designed by the architect Palladio in the 1560s. Palladio, who wrote four books on architecture, was greatly inspired by the Roman temple form. He was interested in architectural theory, ideal proportions, and the classical orders. Similar in form to the Pantheon in Rome, the Villa Rotunda is completely symmetrical. With a projecting portico on each square side and is topped with a hemispherical dome. Palladio's work went on to inspire architects for centuries, especially in Britain and the United States. Why did Whistler go to court? J. 
James Abbott McNeil Whistler, 1834103, is now most famous for a portrait of his mother in a rocking chair. But his work during the second half of the 19th century is notable for its increasing abstraction. Whistler was American, but spent the majority of his career in London. And never returned to the United States after moving to that English city. His early paintings were influenced by aestheticism and he painted many successful portraits. But he was interested in the idea of art as a visual music. He even named an 1862 portrait of a girl in a white dress, Symphony in White No. 1. To emphasize the musicality of his work. In his 1893 autobiography, The Gentle Art of Making Enemies, he wrote As music is the poetry of sound, so is painting the poetry of sight and the subject matter. Has nothing to do with harmony of sound or of color, as quoted in Stockstad 885. In 1875, Whistler shocked the world with his almost completely abstract painting. Nocturne in Black and Gold, also known as the Falling Rocket. Whistler was accused of having no clear subject for his work. And those who viewed it described it as looking unfinished. The painting personally enraged John Ruskin, Britain's premier art critic who accused the artist of throwing paint in the public's face with such an abstract work. Whistler sued Ruskin for libel and soon Whistler found himself on the witness stand answering questions about his artistic intentions. When asked about the subject of the painting, Whistler explained that he was attempting an artistic arrangement and a representation of fireworks over the town of Cremern. Not a realistic visualization of the town. He further explained his support for the aesthetic concept of art for art's sake. Whistler won the trial, but received only a single farthing in damages. A reflection of the generally negative attitude about his work at the time. The episode also highlights the vigor with which artists and critics were debating the value of increased abstraction. What is an arch? In art historical terms, an arch is a semicircular construction of blocks of material called voussoirs, which hold each other in place due to compression, and span an open space. This type of arch is known as a true arch. Other simple forms of arches include the corbelled arch in which blocks of material are overlapped in order to span a similar opening. The true arch is stronger than a corbelled arch, especially when constructed out of stone. The pointed arch, rather than the round arch, provides superior support and was widely used in Gothic cathedrals. What are Hanuwa? Hanuwa are figurative funerary markers made during the Kofun period in Japan, 300 to 710 C. E, developing over time from simple, 
cylindrical forms. These unglazed, clay works reflect a Japanese taste for simple, organic design. Never perfectly symmetrical, Hanawa are purposefully irregular. Though their exact function is unknown. Hanawa may serve to connect the world of the dead with the world of the living. Can a video game be a work of art? All works of art, but perhaps most obviously installation art. Rely upon the participation of viewer to generate meaning. When you go to a gallery and look the art. Your thoughts and experiences affect the meaning of the art you see and interpret. This exchange is naturally extended to the concept of game play and video games. Game theory and game art have been a fruitful source of artistic exploration for years. In 2001, the Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art exhibited Game Show. And in 2012 the Smithsonian American Art Museum held a show called, The Art of Video Games. The show's curator, Chris Melisinos, explained that through the video game medium. We are invited by the artist to inject our own morality, our own worldview, our own experiences into the game as we play it. And what comes out is wholly different from everybody that experiences it, the art of video games. Like other forms of digital art, video game art is very young. And generations of innovative artists will likely mine the medium for its theoretical and aesthetic potential in the years to come. What is the difference between relief sculpture and sculpture in the round? A relief sculpture is a type of sculpture in which a design projects from the surface of the sculpted material. Like a rubber stamp, though not necessarily flat. Relief sculpture can be seen from only one vantage point, usually straight on. Sculpture in the round is freestanding and finished on all sides. A viewer can move all the way around a sculpture in the round. And is able to look at the work from multiple vantage points. What is the Ananda Temple? The Ananda Temple is the most famous and spiritually significant Buddhist shrine. In Burma and was built in the early 12th century by the leader Kyanzita during the pagan period. Which lasted from the 11th to 14th centuries. The temple is notable for its cruciform shape and tall central spire, which is 165 feet high. The temple is decorated with additional small spires, spikes, and four large sculptures of the Buddha, each reaching a height of approximately 35 feet. The lavish ornamental architecture of the Ananda temple reflects the flourishing of Buddhism in Burma at the time of its construction. What is the subject of a work of art?
the subject is what a particular work of art represents. Recognizing the subject of a work of art is a good first step. In understanding what meaning the piece might be communicating. Not all works of art have a subject. For example, an abstract sculpture might not be representational. But that does not mean the sculpture expresses no meaning. What is a vault? Common in medieval church architecture, vaults come in many forms. Essentially, a vault is an arched roof structure that covers an interior space. A semicircular barrel vault, also known as a tunnel vault, is the simplest form. A groin vault is the name given to two intersecting barrel vaults. What is Fragonard's The Swing? Jean Honor Fragonard's, 1732-1806, Erotic Painting The Swing, 1756, is an example of a boudoir painting. So called because its intimate subject was meant for private viewing. Fragonard accepted the commission to paint the swing, after another artist. Gabriel Frango Estoyen, declined to take on the project. The painting depicts a lush, expansive garden scene. At its center is a young woman wearing a flowing pink frock. Her apparent lover, a man in a grey suit wearing a white powdered wig reclines below her while a cleric pushes her on a swing. The lady is shown rising just above the aristocrat, giving him a salacious view under her dress, shocking nearby cherubs. Her delicate, pink shoe pops off her pointed toe, in apparent acquiescence. The painting is famous for its radiant colors and sensual themes. And is another good example of the Rococo style. What is prehistory? Prehistory is the period of human history that preceded the invention of writing. Prehistoric art, therefore, is art made before the existence of the written word. The Prehistoric art covered in this section spans from around 35,000 BCE to 1000 BCE. Is there such a thing as Impressionist sculpture? Although he never called himself an Impressionist, the work of highly acclaimed French sculptor Auguste Rodin. 1840-1917, achieves many of the same goals as the work of the Impressionist painters. To capture a sense of fleeting time and capture movement. Rodin's sculpture is characterized by rugged realism and expressive poses. As exemplified in his iconic marble and bronze sculpture, The Thinker. But, Impressionist values can be seen in his controversial sculpture, 
monument to Balzac. Which Rodin created over seven years, after a commission from the French society. Of men of letters in 1891 to commemorate Honor de Balzac, the French literary giant. This work captures the spirit of Balzac and the monumentality of his creative genius. Like Impressionist paintings, it takes on an unfinished form and emphasizes surface texture. When Rodin shared a plaster model of the sculpture in 1898, it was heavily criticized and the finished bronze and marble cast was not completed until after his death. Despite the initial criticism, the sculpture, and Rodin's overall body of work, is considered to be among the most innovative and significant examples of 19th century sculpture. And Rodin is credited with foreshadowing modernism. Therefore, not only can Rodin's work be considered impressionist, but it also ushered in a new era of sculptural innovation. Who was Frida Kahlo? Frida Kahlo, 1907-1954, may have been married to Diego Rivera. But her style of painting was highly individual and eschewed the monumentality of many. Of her male counterparts who were part of the Mexican muralist movement. Kahlo's autobiographical self-portraits had more in common with miniature paintings and she was highly influenced by Mexican folk painting. Although not officially considered a surrealist, many of her paintings focus on themes of emotion and psychology through slightly disturbing, dreamlike imagery. Her painting, The Two Fridas, 1939, depicts two seated self-portraits. One dressed in a European-style dress and the other in traditional Mexico clothing. Representing her dual heritage, her father was German and her mother was Mexican. The anatomically detailed hearts of both Fridas can be seen through their chests. Each connected with a long, thin blood vessel that wraps around them. The Frida on the left holds a pair of scissors and she cuts the vessel, blood spilling from the tip. This is thought to represent both Aztec sacrifice and the lifelong pain she suffered after. A traumatic bus accident in 1925. Other famous works by Kahlo include Self-Portrait with Thorn Necklace. 1940 and self-portrait on the border between Mexico and the United States, 1932. Where is the ancient Near East? The ancient Near East is a term used by art historians to refer to the area near the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers, also called Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia is a Greek word that means the land between two rivers. The ancient Near East is also thought of as the cradle of civilization. As it is here that urban society developed for the first time, with it came the invention of writing and laws. The first examples of epic poetry, the construction of cities, and of course, monumental art and architecture.
Who was Winslow Homer? Winslow Homer, 1836 to 1910, was an American painter who worked as a magazine illustrator and war correspondent during the Civil War. He is known for his depictions of leisure activities and outdoor scenes. And like Thomas Eakins was a proponent of realism. Though his work is characterized by its nostalgia for the simplicity of the pre-industrial era. His painting, Snap the Whip, 1872, monumentalizes a traditional children's game and includes a Depiction of a one-room schoolhouse and boys dressed in simple, country clothes with no shoes on. The scene is in stark contrast to the pain of the Civil War. And the changes brought on during its aftermath and during the Industrial Revolution. How did the world change during the Baroque period? Between the mid-16th century and the mid-18th century, Europe and the rest of the world went through significant changes. During this time, Europeans were engaged in the age of exploration they sent out fleets of ships into the world's oceans with various goals, including competition between one another for political domination, economic expansion, and religious conversion of the people in the so-called New World. In Europe, the Thirty Years' War raged on from 1618 to 1648, forever shifting power on the continent and weakening the Holy Roman Empire. Many significant scientific discoveries also took place during the Baroque period, including Isaac Newton's discovery of gravity. Philosophy was impacted by Descartes' revolutionary statement. I think, Therefore I am, making him the father of modern philosophy. Who was Theo van Gogh? Theo, 1857-1891, was the younger brother of Vincent van Gogh, who supported his brother both financially and emotionally. Theo introduced Vincent to the Impressionists working in Paris at the time, and the two wrote regular letters to each other during their lifetimes. Besides his support of his brother, Theo van Gogh was also an important art dealer first working in Brussels and later in Paris, where he bought and exhibited paintings by Impressionist artists such as Claude Monet and Camille Pissarro. He also helped to sell the work of Paul Gauguin, who was also a friend of Vincent's. Although Theo tried to sell his brother's work in Paris, he did not meet much success. He died six months after Vincent at the age of 33. Who was Bronzino? Bronzino was the nickname of Florentine artist Agnolo di Cosimo. 1503-1572, who studied under Pontormo, a fellow Mannerist painter. 
Bronzino's most significant patron was the Medici family, for whom he completed many projects, including altarpieces and frescoes. Today, his portraits are among his most well known paintings, particularly his portrait of a young man. Painted in the 1530s, and now in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. The identity of the young portrait sitter is unknown. But he is likely a friend of Bronzino's who ran in the same literary circles. Bronzino also wrote poetry. The sitter holds his finger gingerly between the pages of a book, eliciting curiosity about its contents. The well dressed young man is poised. With good posture and an air of confidence that is only belied by his slightly crossed eyes. He seems to be fully aware of his own superficial airs. He is as much of a mask as the faces carved into the side of the ornate table. This is Bronzino's skill the artist has an ability to purposefully pose his sitter for the viewer. To make us aware that we can only see the cover, and not the contents of the book. What was the Ashken school? The Ashken School was a loosely affiliated group of American realist artists made up of some members of the eight. Including Robert Henry, William Glackens, George Lux, Everett Shin, and John Sloan. The painter George Bellows, 1882-1925, is also associated with the Ashken School. Like the Impressionists, the artists of the Askin School were interested in scenes of everyday American life. Though they tended towards darker themes. Paintings such as John Sloan's Election Night, 1907, and George Bellows' Cliff Dwellers, 1913. Feature bold colors and seemingly spontaneous energy as large groups of people fill the frame. The Ashken School is considered the first modern American art movement. What impact did the Silk Road have on the ancient art trade? During the 2nd century B. CE, the Silk Road was the longest road on Earth, at over 5,000 miles. It connected the Chinese city of Luoyang with the city of Rome in Western Europe and branched off to locations as far as India and Afghanistan. The journey from east to west started at Yemen, the Jade Gate. Located at the western end of the Great Wall of China. Goods would have exchanged hands many times before reaching the furthest points along the road. The road allowed ancient Romans access to painted Chinese silk. And other luxury items such as ivory, gold, gems, and spices. What is a book of ours? A book of ours is a private prayer book, which became popular in the 13th and 14th centuries as literacy levels among the European nobility increased. The books included specific prayers to be recited at certain times. Or hours, 
of the day and night, and were often devoted to the Virgin Mary. A book of hours was a valuable object, and owning one was a sign of wealth. One of the most masterfully decorated books of hours from the 14th century is the hours of Jean de Avrouz. What is digital art? Digital art is art made by using digital technologies, such as a computer. Digital art is now more commonly referred to as new media art and can include two-dimensional images. Whether printed or not, made with software programs such as Adobe Photoshop, for example. Three-dimensional works, or even multimedia works such as animations or videos made using computer software. What is graphic art? Graphic art is a loose term encompassing two-dimensional art such as drawing, painting, and printmaking, especially work that emphasizes line over color. Graphic art, a broad category, is not the same thing as graphic design, which relates to printed work that incorporates text and image. What is perspective? Perspective is a system artists use to create the illusion of three-dimensional space. There are multiple different types of perspective techniques. Including single-point perspective and atmospheric perspective. Single point perspective, also known as linear perspective, was invented in the 15th century by the Italian architect Filippo Bruno Lesci. He used a system of parallel lines converging upon a central point called the vanishing point. Using this system, the space within a painting appears to be the continuation of real space. Atmospheric perspective relies on color and form rather than lines to create an illusion of three-dimensional space. Using this technique, forms in the background are smaller and blurrier than objects in the foreground. Forms overlap one another, and the sky is painted so that it transitions from blue to white. Where did art begin? Most traditional art history survey textbooks and courses begin with the prehistoric art of Europe and the Near East. It is convention, as much as anything else, and fits within the mostly chronologic presentation of the history of art in this book. Do note, however, that art itself did not begin in Europe. There is no single place where art began. Examples of prehistoric art can be found around the globe. What is process art?
Process art is art that explores the act of producing art. And is often less concerned with the object or work that is eventually produced. The process art movement began in the 1960s and can be seen in the paintings of abstract expressionist Jackson Pollock, which were at least in part defined by the process through which he made them the drip and splatter process. Other art movements also have overlaps with process art, including earthworks, land art. Because of the way in which the environment acts upon them after they are created. The often monumental yet minimalist work of American sculptor Richard Serra, 1939, is a good example of process art. His steel sculptures encourage viewers to think about the nature of the materials and the way in which they were put together. What at first seems simple a tall, tower-like slab of steel, for example, becomes a curiosity as one contemplates how What is prehistoric Jericho? Prehistoric Jericho, also known as Tel El Sultan, is one of the most important Neolithic sites excavated by archaeologists and contains key examples of Neolithic art and architecture. Prehistoric people had settled at the Jericho site as early as 12,000 BCE and domestication of animals began around 9,000 BCE. The architecture of Neolithic Jericho included mud brick houses with plastered floors, which were painted red and white, as well as evidence of sophisticated fortifications, including 22 a 28 foot high stone tower and 20 foot high wall surrounding the village. By 7000 BCE, as many as 2,000 people may have lived in Neolithic Jericho. What was the Ottoman Empire? The Ottoman Empire was a Turkish state founded in the 13th century by Osman I who then expanded his territories, eventually dislodging Byzantine rulers and taking over Constantinople in 1453. Constantinople, now called Istanbul, became the capital of the Ottoman Empire, which by the 15th century controlled large portions of North Africa, the Middle East, and the Mediterranean. The Ottoman Empire was one of the longest lasting powers in history. Only falling in 1922 when Turkey became a republic. Who was Sol Solar? Sol Solar was the pseudonym of Argentinian avant-garde. Artist Oscar Augustin Alejandro Schultz Solari, 1887-1963. In Latin, the word for light is lux, the reverse of which became his name. Much of Sol Solar's work is either unknown or unseen by the public as he worked on small watercolor paintings that were rarely exhibited during his lifetime. His work is indebted to European modernism, and Solar was particularly influenced by Paul Klee. 
but it is also infused with the artist's personal interest in mysticism and indigenous culture. Paintings such as Hayfa, Patronus, 1923, are brightly colored and incorporate figurative imagery with abstract form and symbols, such as numbers and the Jewish Star of David. Sol Solar's work, which also included sculpture and writing, is an example of the ways in which Latin American artists took European modernism and made it their own. What is video art? While artists such as Andy Warhol had experimented with film and video recordings. Video art was born in 1965 when Fluxus artist Nam June Paik filmed the streets of New York City with his brand new Sony portable video camera and showed the videos mere hours later at a cafe. Video art, which is a medium, not a style, in the way that oil painting is a medium. Represents a transition from mass media influence to television influence. Video art can take many forms, from use in sculpture and installations. To performances and videos can be broadcast live or recorded and displayed in various settings. In 1996, Douglas Gordon won the British Turner Prize for his video work 24 Hour Psycho, 1996. Contemporary video artists include Bill Viola, 1951, Matthew Barney, 1967. Creator of the Cree Master film series, and Canadian Stan Douglas, 1960, among many others. Who was Maria Montoya Martinez? Maria Montoya Martinez, 1887-1980, was a Native American artist from San Ildefonso Pueblo in New Mexico who, along with her husband Juan Martinez, is famous for highly polished black-on-black -black ceramics, which are highly valuable on the art market. The Martinez's pots were often traditional in form, but decorated with geometric curvilinear designs influenced by the Art Deco styles popular during the early 20th century. Maria Martinez was the only Pueblo artist to consistently sign her work, which she occasionally did using her native Tewa name, Povica, Pond Lily. The community-focused Martinez also signed pots with both her and her husband's name. As well as the names of her Pueblo neighbors. What is art theory? Theories of art, or critical theories. Help us understand the meaning of art and culture from a philosophical perspective. Many artists use art to communicate philosophic opinions and ideas about art and culture through their work. While scholars and art historians use theory to put art and artists into cultural context. Theorists are interested in looking beyond the superficial qualities of art and digging deep into questions of meaning and significance. Some, but definitely not all, 
important lines of theoretical questioning come from fields such as psychoanalysis. Marxism, feminism, and gender studies, post-colonialism, and post-modernism. Where can I see art in my area? Art is all around us, especially if you are looking for it. Be sure to check out local galleries and museums, which usually have both permanent collections and temporary exhibitions that change regularly. Cafes, bookstores, and frame shops also often hang original art by local artists on the walls and sometimes have talks about art. These are great places to meet other people who are interested in art. Especially during the summer months. Arts and crafts fairs and festivals are frequently held in downtowns, parks, and fairgrounds. Search online or stop in at your local arts and crafts store, gallery, or cafe. Which might have some information on upcoming art events. I want to learn more. What is the post and lintel system? The post and lintel system is the oldest and simplest architectural construction in which two upright forms, called posts, support the load of a horizontal beam, known as a lintel. The posts must be strong, and close, enough to prevent the lintel from weakening in the middle. Especially if the lintel is carrying the heavy load of a wall or a roof. When did printmaking begin? By the 16th century, printing technology, such as the woodcut, had been around for hundreds of years, first developing in China in the 5th century. Printmaking was first used to apply patterns to textiles, and then later was used on paper. Intaglio processes, such as engraving and etching, developed in Germany in the middle of the 15th century. Evolved from techniques used by goldsmiths and jewelers. Printmaking allowed artists to make multiple copies of a text or an image and mass production of prints began in the 16th century, forever changing the consumption of art images and texts. Why did the Romans copy Greek sculpture? Much like today, a large art collection was an indication of wealth and status in ancient Rome. Greek art was held in high regard by the ever-expanding Romans who set about conquering the Mediterranean and coming home with art and treasure from across the land. Roman artists copied many marble and bronze statues in order to meet popular demand usually working in marble. Not all Roman sculptures were exact copies, however. Roman sculptors adapted Greek sculpture and updated it to match the tastes of the Roman art-buying public. 
All in all, we are lucky the Romans did so much copying. Many original Greek bronzes were long ago melted down, to make things such as weapons and armor. And therefore much of our knowledge of Greek art comes from Roman copies. What movies have been made about famous artists? Artists have been inspiring films for decades. The following is a short list of movies either about or inspired by artists. Exit through the gift shop. 2010 an intriguing documentary about the enigmatic street artist Banksy. Little Ashes. 2008, Robert Pattinson plays Salvador Dali in a film about the artist's relationships with filmmaker Luis Bunuel. And writer Federico Garcia Lorca. Factory Girl, 2006. A dramatic look at Edie Sedgwick's relationship with Andy Warhol. Klimt. 2006, John Malkovich plays the Austrian artist Gustav Klimt. Maudi Leone, 2004. A dramatic romance that focuses on the rivalry between artists Maudi Leone and Picasso in Paris. The Girl with the Pearl Earring, 2003. A film inspired by a novel by Tracy Chevalier that was in turn inspired by the famous painting by Jan Vermeer. Frida. 2002, Salma Hayek and Alfred Molina star as Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera. Respectively. Pollock, 2000. Starring Ed Harris as abstract expressionist painter Jackson Pollock. Marcia Gay Harden won the Academy Award for her portrayal of Lee Krasna. Goya in Bordeaux. 1999, a dramatic Spanish-language film about the artist Francisco de Goya. Surviving Picasso. 1996, Anthony Hopkins stars as Pablo Picasso in this film about the women in his life. Basquiat. 1996, a biopic of the postmodernist artist Jean-Michel Basquiat. I shot Andy Warhol. 1996, Lily Taylor stars as Valerie Solanese, who shot Andy Warhol in 1968. Vincent and Theo, 1990. Robert Altman directs this film about the relationship between brothers Vincent and Theo Van Gogh. Camille Claudel. 1988, a French film about sculptor Camille Claudel and her relationship with Auguste Rodin. Aubrey, 1986. Donald Sutherland plays French artist Paul Gauguin. What is the difference between Baroque and Rococo? The difference between Baroque and Rococo art can be fairly confusing and even art historians aren't exactly sure where to draw the line, some even consider Rococo to be an ornate subcategory of Baroque. In general, Baroque is thought of as more rigid than Rococo. For example, compare the architectural style of Versailles with the Würzburg residence in southern Germany, which features gold-painted capitals and pastel-colored ceiling paintings. Rococo art is, overall, less religious than Baroque paintings, with a tendency towards images of parties idealized landscapes, and romantic engagements. 
whereas Baroque artists favored religious symbolism, biblical scenes, and monumental mythological paintings. Color choice is another way to tell the difference, Baroque paintings, in the manner of Caravaggio. Emphasize chiaroscuro and bold, rich colors. While Rococo paintings are brightly illuminated and feature powdery pinks, light greens, and other pastels. What is art informal? Art informal, also known as both Tashism and lyrical abstraction, was essentially the European equivalent of American abstract expressionism. With an emphasis on non geometric abstraction, spontaneity, and expressive brushwork. In French, the word tach, of Tashism, means splotch. Referring to the manner in which paint has been blotted onto the canvas. Artists associated with art informal include Jean Fourier, 1898-1964, Hans Hartung, 1904-1989, and Alfred Otto Wolfgang Schultz, better known as Wohls, 1913-1951. The work of Jean Dubuffet, which is associated with Art Brut, is also sometimes categorized as Art Informal. What is the color wheel? The color wheel is a system of organizing identifiable hues in a way that helps artists understand the relationship between colors. The color wheel is shaped like a ring, and is made up of 12 hues. Primary, secondary, and tertiary colors are identified on the wheel. Colors placed on directly opposite sides of the wheel are considered complementary. According to the color wheel, yellow and violet are complementary colors. Artists use complementary colors to create vivid, aesthetically powerful images. Who was Annabelle Karachi? The paintings of Annabelle Karachi, 1560-1609, were innovative for their naturalism. Broken brush strokes, and use of light. Karachi came from an artistic family, his older brother Agostino and his cousin, Ludovico, were also highly esteemed painters. Caracci was particularly inspired by Northern Italian Renaissance masters such as Titian, Correggio and Tintoretto and he wanted to carry on a tradition of classically inspired painting. He studied in Rome, where he was impressed with the work of Michelangelo and Raphael. Like them, he went on to create masterfully illusionistic frescoes and ceiling paintings. In 1595 he was commissioned by Cardinal Odoardo Farnese to decorate the Farnese Palace in Rome. His work there is a Baroque masterpiece known as The Loves of the Gods, a cycle of ceiling frescoes. It took nearly 10 years to complete the paintings, which cover the barrel vaulted ceiling of the palazzo and feature monumental scenes depicting mythological gods and heroes. 
Karachi's work went on to inspire other great fresco artists. Such as Pietro de Cortona, as well as other painters, including Pusa and Rubens. What is the classical pantheon? The ancient Greeks and Romans were polytheistic, which means that they believed in many gods. Each with different attributes and personalities, and collectively referred to as the Greek and Roman pantheon. The human-like classical gods and goddess were frequently depicted in ancient art. And temples were built in their honor. Greek name Roman name description Zeus Jupiter ruler of the gods, often depicted holding a lightning bolt. Reigns from Mount Olympus, Hera Juno wife of Zeus and goddess of marriage. Often jealous as Zeus had many affairs, Aphrodite Venus goddess of beauty, love, and sex, mother of Cupid. Known for frequent love affairs with gods and mortals, Apollo Apollo son of Zeus and twin brother to Artemis. God of the sun, music, archery, prophecy, and poetry, Athena Minerva patron goddess of Athens. Goddess of Wisdom, Weaving, and Art, Demeter Ceres Goddess of Fertility and Harvest, her daughter. Persephone, was kidnapped by Hades and taken to the underworld, Hades Pluto God of the Underworld. Ares Mars God of War, Hermes Mercury Messenger God, often depicted with a winged helmet. Artemis Diana Virgin Goddess of the Hunt and Wilderness, Poseidon Neptune God of the Sea, depicted carrying a trident. How did African art influence art of the early 20th century? At the beginning of the early 20th century, Western artists such as Pablo Picasso 1881-1973, and Emil Nolde, 1867-1956, became interested in the so-called primitive art of non-Western cultures, including the arts of Africa and the Pacific. In France, Artists were able to see non-Western art at the Musée d'Ethnographie in Paris. Although they were inspired by the visual expressivity and relative abstraction of much non-Western art. Most European artists made little to no attempt to understand. The historical and cultural context of the pieces they viewed, and often purchased. Picasso's art was significantly inspired by African style. Allowing the artist freedom to explore with color and style. For example, one of his most important paintings, Des Moiselles de Vignon, 1907, is characterized by elongated figures and abstract faces commonly found in African masks and sculpture. Another painting, Mother and Child, 1907, uses bold colors and ovoid forms to reinvent traditional Christian subject matter. Despite the clear influence, Picasso occasionally downplayed the importance of African art his own work, preferring not to talk about it. What is the difference between a shogun, a daimyo, and a samurai?
from the 12th century until the 19th century. Japan was a feudal society controlled by a powerful ruler, called a shogun. The shogun maintained power over his large territory. The daimyo, a Japanese word meaning great names, were feudal landowners equivalent to medieval European lords. The daimyo commanded the samurai, a distinct class of swordsmen trained to be devoted to the shogun. What are some of the challenges in studying ancient African art? Africa is a vast continent with significant variations in geography and culture. African art can include sculpture, pottery, jewelry, rock painting, textiles, and architecture. Among other forms, much of African art was made from perishable materials, though stone and metal were also common media. And was meant to either be used in religious ceremonies, or was meant to be worn. Most African art is neither labeled nor signed by the artist. Many objects have been discovered accidentally and therefore without any context. Though there is some documentation, in general, ancient Africa lacks a written record as religious. And cultural traditions were transmitted orally from one generation to the next. And this can make it difficult for scholars to contextualize, and even confidently date, the ancient art that has been found. One of the most significant problems is illegal excavation and the selling of sensitive objects on the black market. This results in the often irretrievable loss of important information about a work of art. Similar challenges face art historians studying art from other parts of the world including but certainly not limited to the Pacific and the Americas. What are hieroglyphs? Hieroglyphs were used by the ancient Egyptians as a formal writing system made up of a combination of pictures and alphabetic letters. The term comes from the Greek word hieros which means sacred and glyph, which means writing or drawing. The meaning of ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs was mostly unknown until the 18th century discovery of the Rosetta Stone. An ancient steel made of diorite upon which the same text was written in three languages. Ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, another Egyptian script called the Demotic script, as well as ancient Greek. This allowed scholars to finally understand many previously untranslatable hieroglyphic inscriptions. Ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs are found on papyrus scrolls, wall paintings, and carved into stone. They often accompany images and are used to identify scenes and figures. Who is Shirin Neshet? Shirin Neshet, 1957, is an Iranian-American photographer and video artist whose photographs frequently explore stereotypes of Muslim women. Her later video work, including Tuba, 2002, and Logic of the Birds.
2002, explores spiritual themes through Quranic symbolism and music. What is the Gross Clinic? The Gross Clinic is an 1875 realist painting by the American painter Thomas Aikens and depicts Dr. Samuel David Gross performing leg surgery in front of medical students. The choice of subject matter was shocking to the traditional art critics and the painting was rejected by the Philadelphia Centennial Exhibition in 1876. The painting is notable for its use of chiaroscuro. A sharp contrast of dark and light that is reminiscent of Baroque painting. Powerful beams of light highlight both Dr. Gross's forehead and bloody, scalpel-wielding hand, emphasizing his intelligence and dexterity. The patient's leg has been cut open, revealing the muscle underneath the skin. Causing the patient's mother, also among the audience, to recoil and hide her face. The Gross Clinic highlights Aikens's dedication to realism and is an important example of 19th century American painting. What is pointillism? Pointillism is the name of a style most associated with the work of George Isra, 1859-1891, who was interested in color theory and experimented with complementary colors. Seurat studied classical color theory and the theories of 19th-century chemist Michel-Eugène Chevreul. In The Laws of Contrast Color, 1824, Chevreul explained that two adjacent colors would reflect each other's complementary color, the color on the opposite side of the color wheel. In his visual experiments, Seurat placed dots of pure color side by side in his paintings. With the idea that the viewer's eye would blend the colors together, according to the theory. Seurat called this technique divisionism. But art critics used the term pointillism, which is now more common. Seurat's most famous Pointeist painting is a Sunday Afternoon on the island of La Grande Jatte, 1884-1886 This very large painting, over 10 feet long, is made up of thousands of distinct painted dots and depicts a relaxing leisure scene. Bourgeois Parisians relax along a riverbank. Well-dressed men, women, and children mill about on the grass. Some holding umbrellas, while others recline in the shade. The monumental scene has a rather formal style due to the Pointeist technique. And the individual dots are quite clear when closely inspected. A number of artists, including Vincent van Gogh, experimented with pointillism and other pointillist works include Maximilian Luce's Morning, Interior, 1890, and Family in the Orchard. 1890, by Theo van Rysselberg, who went through a pointillist phase. Three Apples, 1878 to 79
Art courtesy the Barnes Foundation. Marion, Pennsylvania, USA slash the Bridgman Art Library. What is a sketch? A sketch is a quick, preliminary drawing. Who was Artemisia Gentileschi? Like other Caravagisti, or followers of Caravaggio. The work of female painter Artemisia Gentileschi, 1593 c. 1652, is characterized by dramatic diagonals, naturalism. Chiaroscuro, contrasts of dark and light, and powerful subject matter. She was arguably the most successful female artist of her day. She worked for the Duke of Tuscany and was the first female member of the Florentine Academy of Design. She is known for her paintings of the Old Testament story of Judith beheading Holofernes. A popular scene in the 16th and 17th centuries. And often analyzed in relation to a rape she suffered at the hands of her tutor when she was 17 years old. Male or female, Artemisia Gentileschi was one of the most skilled naturalist painters of the Baroque period. 